Namaste everyone. Today's story from Joy of Reading is Fossils, Tales of Long Ago. The author is Anupama Chandrasekharan and the illustrator is Rai. The publisher is Pratham Books. Fossils, what are they? And why are they tales or stories from long time in the past? Let us see. Fossils can answer many questions about our past, about beasts that are extinct, early humans, places that were once cold but are now warm, forests that have become deserts. So fossils are something that can explain or answer questions about our past that was present in like ages back. About what? About animals that are no longer there or extinct, no longer there means extinct, they are no longer there in the earth. About humans that were there in those early periods and places that were once very cold are now warm. Places that were once forests that have now become deserts. So fossils help us answer those questions. How? Fossils are remains of plants and animals. Some may have turned to stone with time, while others have remained preserved with flesh and bone under ice or in tree sap. Fossils are rare because they have to survive climatic changes over thousands of years. So fossils are remains or the leftover of plants and animals of long time back. And some of them turn into stone over the years like you see here, or some of them are preserved. That is they have made, the state is maintained both with flesh and bone in some cases with just the bone, especially if they are under ice or under in tree sap. Tree sap is nothing but the sap is the liquid present in the tree and that helps in preserving uh, these uh, animals with their flesh and bone. Fossils are very hard to find because why? They have to survive all these climatic changes of extreme hot, hot temperatures or extreme cold temperatures, right? And that too over thousands and sometimes even millions of years. In 1828, British explorer William Sleeman discovered the first dinosaur fossil in our country in the Narmada Valley. The fossil was named Titanosaurus in 1877 by Richard Lidecker, a British naturalist and geologist. So William Sleeman, an explorer, the one who goes from place to place to find things, he first discovered or found the first dinosaur fossil in our country. Dinosaur we know are those huge creatures that existed in past and he found it in the Narmada Valley. It's in Madhya Pradesh, especially in the Jabalpur area. And Richard Lidecker named it as Titanosaurus. You can see it out here. A geologist is a one who studies about Earth, its physical processes, um, about what it is composed of and so on and so forth. Fossils can be of many kinds. The most common fossils are replicas of animals or plant remains. They are created when dead plants or animals are thrust under water. When this happens, the soft parts rot. So there are different types of fossils. So the most common ones are replicas. Replica meaning the exact copy of the animal or the plant remains. And how are they formed or created? When these dead plants or animals are pushed under water or thrust under water. So what happens at that time? All the soft parts, right? Like the flesh and the skin rot or decay. You can see some of these fossils here. It's a leaf here, a starfish, a mollusk, this shape. Mollusks are nothing but snails, clam, slugs, those different creatures that are there. Some of the mollusks have hard shells which help in the formation of fossils. But the hard parts like bones, 
teeth and shells are remain soil mud and pebbles pile on it and form a cocoon over time even the bones shells and teeth dissolve leaving gaps but minerals in the water fill these gaps and create replicas these are body fossils so before i explain just in the sentence we need to delete this r or remove so it should be but the hard parts like bones teeth and shells remain so so we saw that the soft parts rot or decay uh, but the hard parts like the bones teeth they remain the soft parts first goes or rots now sooner after that over the years a soil mud stones or pebbles all pile on it or fall on top of it and they form a cocoon or a wrap kind of a thing so over time even these hard parts dissolve or disappear leaving gaps here and there but then soon the water comes and the minerals in the water fills these gaps and creates these replicas so the most common fossils we said were replicas or exact copy of the animals and plants right and they are called as body fossils so that is the first type that we are seeing that is an exact copy of the animal or the plant and you can see some fossils out here body fossils have been found across the country in eastern gujarat scientist dhananjay mohabe dug out a body fossil of a snake devouring a dinosaur hatchling so in eastern gujarat dhananjay mohabe found a body fossil and what it was it was of a snake devouring or hungrily eating a dinosaur hatchling a hatchling is a young one that has just come out of the egg so the young small dinosaur just came out of the egg so you can see this is the body fossil and you have to imagine like this, this is a snake here the hatchling the dinosaur hatchling just came out of the egg and this is kind of going ahead to eat it or devour it in madhya pradesh vishal varma a school teacher discovered hundreds of dinosaur egg fossils along the narmada river in tamil nadu fossil subramaniam collected fossils of ammonites ammonites are ancient soft bodied mollusks that are survived by their spiral shells some of which are the size of truck wheels so so we have fossils being found in different parts of india vishal varma a school teacher in madhya pradesh he discovered lots of dinosaur egg fossils you can see and where did he find along the narmada river in madhya pradesh and in tamil nadu fossil subramaniam he found fossils of ammonites ammonites are these old soft bodied mollusks mollusks are as i mentioned before are um, creatures like snails clams slugs all these ancient but ancient we have a soft body and a hard shell so since they have a hard shell the fossil formation um, happens easily and some of them were as big as truck wheels that is really big actually and you can see these are the mollusks that he found this is the shape you can see here sometimes fossils can also be an entire animal or plant or part of an organism trapped in their natural form and preserved for millions of years these are called true form fossils so we saw body fossils right now when the entire animal or plant or part of an organism uh, is preserved in its natural form like that like what it was then millions of years ago they are called as true form fossils and how is that paleontologist ashok sani and his team discovered spiders and insects in the sticky amber sap in the coal mines of vastan in gujarat so a paleontologist is a expert who studies life forms that existed in previous old geological periods and what did ashok sani discover 
he his team and he discovered spiders and insects as you can see in this picture in a sticky amber sap in coal mines which are present in gujarat um so amber sap is nothing but this uh, liquid from a tree it's it's it's, it's kind of uh, this golden yellow in color called amber, amber and these insects were preserved just like that as you can see here so this is an example of a true form fossil. Trace fossils are insect burrows, footprints or even poop. So there's another type of fossil called trace fossils. They show indirect evidence of life like what? Insect burrows or insect holes where the insect has lived. And footprints, they are a good indication of some creature that is creature has walked here and it has been preserved for millions of years or even poop that has been preserved. Scientist Vandana Prasad found traces of rice pollen in fossilized dinosaur dung from Maharashtra. That's how they discovered that some dinosaurs had chewed on rice grains. So Vandana Prasad, a scientist, what she found a fossilized dinosaur dung that has been preserved over these millions of years. And there in that dung, they found traces of rice pollen, which showed because this dinosaur had eaten uh, rice. So it comes out in the dung in the form of the rice pollen, right? So that's how the scientists figured out that there are some dinosaurs which chewed on or which ate rice grains as well. You can see these pictures here. Tiny fossils are called microfossils, like the remains of the one millimeter thick prokaryotes, single-celled primitive organisms unearthed in Madhya Pradesh. When the bones and teeth of fossils are visible to the naked eye, they are called macrofossils. Some macrofossils can be gigantic, like the 18-foot ichthyosaur, an aquatic reptile whose skeleton was found by paleontologist Guntupalli V.R. Prashad and his team in Gujarat. So there are micro fossils and macro fossils. Micro is anything that is very small. So something that you cannot see with your naked eye and you need to use that of like an electron microscope or something, they are called micro fossils. And what did we find in Madhya Pradesh? A, only a millimeter thick organism, it's a single cell or one cell organism called prokaryotes, which was a organism that lived long, long time back. And some of these micro, uh, micro fossils can be even 0 0.001 millimeter thick as well. So this is at least one millimeter. So in order to see the things inside the organism, you need to use something like an electron microscope. When the bones and teeth of the fossils are visible to the naked eye, to the eye like that, they are called as macrofossils. And we did discover a gigantic or a big macrofossil in Gujarat. Um, and it was of that of an ichthyosaur. Um, and it was an aquatic or a marine reptile. Then there are living fossils. These are species that lived millions or even hundreds of millions of years ago and exist even today. The 10 legged blue blooded horseshoe crabs found in the mangroves of the Sundarbans in West Bengal are living fossils. They are early relatives of spiders and in danger of extinction. They predate dinosaurs by about 200 million years. So the last type of fossils that we are seeing is called living fossils, meaning, so some of the organisms that live today or we see today, we can't find their resemblance to any of the creatures that are there today, but they have resemblance to some of the fossils that we have found, um, which are fossils of organisms that come from hundreds of millions of years ago. And one such is the blue-blooded horseshoe crab, you can see it here, right? It has 10 legs and they're found in the Sundarbans in West Bengal. Sundarbans are the mangroves in West Bengal is very famous. And these are early relatives of spider, but now they are in the danger of extinction. 
And you know the interesting part about it? They existed even 200 million years ago, even before the dinosaurs, and they are still living now. And that's why they're known as living fossils. Isn't that amazing? Fossil map. Fossil of snake devouring dinosaur hatchling, Gujarat. You can find it out somewhere. It was found out somewhere here. Ichthyosaur fossil, Gujarat. It was found out here in Gujarat, near probably to the coast because it's a marine um, aquatic reptile as well. Spider and insects in amber sap, Gujarat. It was about somewhere here. Dinosaur egg fossils, Madhya Pradesh. Titanosaurus, Madhya Pradesh. Again, the Titanosaurus was found in Madhya Pradesh. Ammonite fossils, Tamil Nadu, out here, the ammonite fossil. Dinosaur dung fossil, Maharashtra, this is the dung fossil. Fossils of prokaryotes, Madhya Pradesh, somewhere here. Horseshoe crabs, West Bengal. So it's in the Sundarbans in West Bengal. I hope you enjoyed learning information about fossils along with me. Thank you. Let us relearn some of the difficult words we have seen. First is a picture of a mollusk shell. Geologist, an expert who studies the physical structure, history, processes, etc. of earth. Preserved, maintained in its existing or original state. Extinct, no longer in existence. Devouring, Eating food quickly, prey hungrily. Paleontologist studies life forms that existed in previous geological periods. Try these. Search on the internet about Ichthyosaur fossil India. Read about it and write a few lines in your own words on what you learnt. Thank you. Till we see you next time, this is Harini signing off. Bye.